What's going on guys? In this week's video, I'm gonna be showing you probably the coolest reptile I have ever seen in my life. Stay tuned. All right, without further ado, I am gonna officially introduce to you my very new Heloderma suspectrum, or otherwise known as the Gila monster. So, a little bit about these animals. These are actually a venomous lizard that are endemic to the Americas. They mostly live in Arizona and parts around northern Mexico. However, parts of them also are in Utah as well. Now, these animals are in fact venomous, and if you look at the lower portion of our jaws, you can see the lower jaw is actually a little bit enlarged. Now the reason for that is because that's where they actually have their venom glands. Now they don't have traditional fangs like snakes do. They have regular teeth, but when they bite onto um, a potential predator or even sometimes prey, that venom will actually excrete through there and into the animal itself. Now, so what does that mean if you get bitten by one of these guys? Well, fun fact, there has actually been no recorded deaths in a human from being bitten by a Gila monster. Now, what does that mean if you do get bitten? I mean, the, the saying goes, and if you watch any YouTube videos, is that if you get bitten by one of these guys, you're gonna wanna be dead. It is excruciatingly painful. Um, now, Typically, I would like to be a little bit more, I'd say, professional and wear gloves. And I do wear gloves while holding the animal, or most in most cases, hold the animal or pick the animal up. But then I will transition into holding it without gloves, which does pose a risk, and it's not something I would recommend. Um, but I am taking a risk here, and I am trying to take the necessary precautions to hold it correctly. And all those precautions are, you can see my two four fingers here are actually on either side of the head, which means if the animal wanted to turn around and bite me, I actually have her restrained enough to the point where she probably won't be able to get me. Now to be able to get such an extraordinarily cool animal is a huge opportunity that I've always been wanting to kind of, anyone who's ever seen a Gila monster probably has some sort of interest in them. They are extremely cool animals. They're just these stocky animals with these chunky little bodies and they're usually black and orange. So they're just awesome, awesome animals. Now, before people start giving me crap, I live in a state where it is legal to own them without a permit. According to the TWRA, Gila monsters are a class three animal, which means you do not need a permit to own them. And I did make sure, and I actually contacted the TWRA before getting the animal just so I could 100% make sure, but I was, informed that you do not need a permit to own one of these animals. Now, it is very different for each state. Some states require permits, some states it's completely illegal, some states you do not need any permits at all. Tennessee, you do not need a permit to own one, but if I did have this animal, I would have made sure regardless, and if I did need a permit, I would have made sure that I gotten those permits beforehand. Now, I'd like to talk about how I got the opportunity to actually own one of these animals. And I was able to get that because someone local to me who is actually a big uh, beard, beard, or beaded and Gila Derma um, breeder, he, there was a big guy who, I think he lived in California. He was a massive breeder of Gila Derma and captive bred animals of amazing species. He actually passed away. I believe he had over 200 Gila monsters. This animal actually came from that guy. Now, this animal was then transferred to my buddy who lives in Tennessee, and he saw that I had a lot of determination to work with these animals. I'm really interested in them and the biology of them, all this other stuff. <clears throat> and what he did is he actually gave me this animal for free. Wow, this is a very old Gila monster. She is actually captive bred, but she is starting to go a little blind, which I may have to sew separate photo of but she's a very old animal she has a great appetite still 
but he didn't see any plans to breed her. So what he did is he told me, you know what, you can just take her and just give her a good rest of her life. So that's what I decided to do. And I am incredibly thankful for this opportunity. So the enclosure that I have her set up in is a six by two by 18. Now for those people who breed Gila monsters, they actually often keep them in rack systems. I have her in a six by two by 18 here. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna get a couple more hides, but she does like to spend a lot of time under this little crescent or cave burrow that I set up for her. We have a water dish that she often soaks in. And other than that, it's pretty simple, but I do want to add a little bit more. I was actually planning on making a massive rock background, custom made, um, but I got the opportunity so soon that I didn't have the chance to do that. But I am gonna be moving around some enclosures here as well as making, getting rid of this whole fundle and bundle of crap that's just sitting here. So once I get some stuff worked out, I'm gonna make a very naturalistic enclosure. I am love ideas of natural enclosures. She's actually sitting on top of my Conexus homiana cage and that'll actually good increase the humidity for them and uh, it won't actually weigh down the cages I have over there because that's an issue I tend to have with PVC. So I do need to get some heavy shelving here to hold these animals up. Now in terms of feeding, all I have to do is feed her once a week and typically I'll just feed her a large mouse. Today I'm gonna give her an egg just to switch it up a little bit and see if she'll get through some of that egg with biting it and maybe perhaps eat some of that eggshell. I did crack the tip of it there, but gosh, these animals are just so cool. In the wild, as far as I'm aware, I believe they are nest hunters, which means they'll just go into burrows and just take eggs and stuff out of there. A lot of people like to feed them quail eggs. Today, I'm just gonna feed a regular white chicken egg. But you can see here, she's actually biting the bowl a little bit. And I am curious if that's probably because of her going blind. She seems to miss a little bit. When I bring up a mouse, she, she gets on it directly. But when it comes to the egg, I've noticed she kind of attacks the bowl like she is right now. Nonetheless, she does eventually get it down. What I might do here is just adjust it a little bit. I mean, obviously gonna use some tongs because you know she is in feeding mode right now. I do not want to put my hands near her. Let's see if we can get her to get that a little bit better. God, it's such cool. There she goes. Let's look at the strength of those jaws just crushing into that egg. That is incredible. Nonetheless, guys, the important thing to consider is that when you work hard and you truly do have a passion for some of these animals, opportunities will come to you. I was patient enough, waiting for months and months, just looking out to breeders and seeing if, you know, there's a possibility of just having, having anything that they don't want that I could possibly just take and just observe. And, you know, I don't, I don't want to do a heap of Gila monster, just resell it for the money. I'm really just love the way these animals interact with their environments. Even though they're an animal that spends most of their life underground, I see her walking around all the time. And I do want to build something with their enclosure to you know, give her a lot more interactions and more things to look through and explore. Now, I do just want to put it out there. Obviously, owning an animal like this is possibly very dangerous. You know, again, there's no one that's been killed by them, but they, they have a very, very strong jaw muscles and a very strong, painful bite. Please do your research in your state and make sure it's even legal if you ever wanna own one of these. And if you do, I actually have a contact and you can get some of the animals that came from this amazing breeder who unfortunately passed away. And if you are actually looking for a Gila monster and they are legal in your state, reach out to me and I'll put you in contact with my buddy. And that way, you know, we can keep this man's legacy alive with the animals that have passed on. He's got, he's very male heavy, so he's got tons of males. Um, you can buy pairs if, again, don't breed them if you don't know about them. You know, do your research. That's incredibly important because they're not legal in every state, obviously. And uh, we're, we're against breaking the law. And I'm very adamant about following the law. And that is because when we're following the law and we're in good, standings with people like our wildlife agencies especially fwc down in florida that'll help us in the long run if we're owning stuff illegally that it doesn't help our case for you know helping our hobby nonetheless guys thank you so much for watching look at her she's just so majestic 
standing on those front legs, just raising herself up. I wonder if she's just trying to get the heat or maybe she's swallowing something. I don't know. I could literally sit here and watch her for hours and hours and hours. It is so entertaining. Um, I do got to do a lot of renovations in my reptile room. I need to move all this stuff around. I need to get some more shelving. I need to get these cages off the floor because it's starting to get cold here in Tennessee. And I want to just make sure everything looks neat. Um, it looks very messy in here right now. It's not how I want my reptile room to look. I kind of want it to look almost like if you were walking into a nature center or something like that. But nonetheless, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I do have a couple other things I want to share real quick before heading out. So the first thing is, is I now have my own little stickers. And with every order of isopods or anything you purchase from me, I will give you a sticker. Um, included with it but if you want to help me for a very cheap way that doesn't have to include you know buying animals or supplies <clears throat> let's say you don't keep animals you just like to look at them um you can buy these stickers for one dollars shipping is completely included uh i just literally you send me a message on facebook i will link my facebook in the description below message me there and i could give you as many stickers as you want for a buck a piece and I'll just send them out basically right in my mailbox. So it takes a couple of days, you'll get those. And it's a very cheap way to help support me. Um, I've already sold a ton of these. A lot of people have been very helpful, friends, old and new alike. So to anyone who has bought one of these, thank you so much, it does help a lot. Another thing you could support me with is uh, you can go, I have an Amazon list and I'll also link that in the description. Supplies are the biggest expense that I buy. And obviously, you know, if I could get a little bit extra help with that, that's great. Otherwise I'll spend my own money with it. I don't care. But anybody who sends me or buys me supplies, I will also send you a sticker as well. <clears throat> you just go through my Amazon list, pick whatever you want and it'll get shipped right to my house. So anyone who does that, I would greatly appreciate. Obviously, I'm not asking you to buy stuff for me. I buy everything my own, but you know, getting extra support doesn't hurt. Um, and finally, the biggest way you can support me is if you just subscribe and like these videos and share them to your friends, that's completely free. So it helps a lot. My channel has been set slowly, but surely growing. Obviously, almost at 300 subscribers isn't you know a huge milestone for anybody, but you know, for me, I'm, I'm happy for what's come because I started at zero, so you know, to all my people who do watch, I greatly appreciate you taking the time to support me. And if you guys want to see um, some more info or pictures and stories about my new animals, feel free to message me and I'll happily send you some stuff. But the Gila Monster right now is the coolest thing I definitely have and I'm super excited about it. So, um, oh, and one last thing. My girlfriend and I actually just celebrated our four year anniversary and she got me an awesome new camera. And I am, I cannot believe she got me like this is just so expensive. It's, it's incredible. But now instead of recording videos on my iPhone 15 pro, I now have a nice 4k camera that I'll be able to record videos on. I'm not the best when it comes to recording videos. I don't really know how I never took a cinematography class or anything, but you know, having two cameras to be able to record things simultaneously is going to be a lot better for me. I do got to do a little bit of research on that, how to use it and everything. So I probably won't have videos made with that for a little bit. But um, in the meantime, I got a great new camera. I could take some great photos of my animals and whatnot. So I'm super excited for that. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. We will see you next week.